Okay, so now we're going to talk about the basics of Venn diagrams. But before we get to Venn diagrams, we need to talk about how to graph each statement. If you know how to graph an A statement, you'll graph it the same way every single time. Same with the other three. So we're just going to go through all four of the statements. So in this case, all dogs are cats, right? This will be our A statement. So we'll put dogs over here, cats over here. So for A statements, or sorry, for A statements and E statements, universal statements, we shade out. Right? So all dogs are cats. So we're going to shade with this. That's how we graph universals. So if we want to say that all dogs are cats, we're trying to say that basically if you're a dog, right, if you're in the dog circle, all dogs are cats, so you have to be in the cat circle. Because if you're a dog, then you're a cat. All dogs are cats. So we block out every part of the dog circle that's not in the cat circle. Right? So we block this all out. So now the only part of the dog circle that's left is where the cats are too, because all dogs are cats. An easy way to think of this is basically the, you'll always shade the S, the subject, of an A statement. You'll just shade that part of the circle where it doesn't overlap with the P every single time. So that's A. Next, we have to erase things. Right, so the next thing we have is an E statement. No dogs are cats. So again, it's universal, so we shade. That's how we graph it. No dogs are cats. So the way we demonstrate that is by shading out the middle, by saying there's no overlap. Right? There's no dogs that are cats. There's nothing that's in the dog circle that's also in the cat circle. There's no overlap at all. Right? So E statements will be graphed like that every single time. No dogs are cats. Every single time graphed in the middle. So it's easy. No matter where it is, that's how it'll be. Every E statement, every time. So that's E. How about moving on to I? Some dogs are cats, right? So universals we shade particulars, I's and O's, we put an X. We block out with shading, but we actually use X marks the spot for particulars, right? Some dogs are cats. Some dogs are cats. So we're trying to say that there's something in the dog circle that's also in the cat circle, right? There's something that's both a dog and a cat. So we put an X in the middle. I don't know how many dogs are cats. I just know that there's something in the overlap. So every single I statement, you put an X in the overlap. It's that simple. And then finally for O statements, some dogs are not cats, some dogs are not cats, right? Some dogs are not cats. Again, particular, so we use an X. Where do we put it? We're trying to say that there's some dogs, there's something in the dog circle that's not a cat. So we put an X in the subject, right? where it doesn't overlap with the predicate for, I, for O statements every single time. You can see that there's a lot of similarities between these, right? I statements have something in common, sorry, O statements have something in common with A. The only difference between an I and an O is that for an O we put an X, for an I we shade. Sorry, for an O we put an X, for an A we sh would shade this part. The same thing is true with E and I. For E statements we shade this part, for I statements we put an X in this part but it's fundamentally the same. Now that's pretty quick, but if that confused you, watch it a couple times, go over it, look at 6.2, but that's the foundation for Venn diagrams. If you get that, then you'll get how to do Venn diagrams. So the next thing we'll do is actually practice with a big Venn diagram.